is DC likely to do anything in this space in the near to medium term that's going to impact day-to-day -day operations for big law firms? Well, today in D.C., Congress usually doesn't act on any uh, major issue until a crisis develops. And, um, that's and we not haven't seen one yet in, in That's law. not exactly what we've seen in D.C. lately, but we've seen pretty major intrusions. Uh, I mean, obviously, the IRS, the Pentagon, uh, our nuclear um, uh, facilities, um, OPM, all of these folks are constantly under attack and with some success uh, by the hackers. And it took Washington forever from a legislative standpoint to really do anything. Number one, we don't, uh, Congress does not act um, very quickly on any issue Thanks. in a comprehensive matter. Uh, excuse me, in a comprehensive way. And the best example of that that people think about is immigration. We, we need a comprehensive immigration package, but that's not going to happen. We need a comprehensive uh, cyber security package, but that's not going to happen. So what has happened is that Senator Feinstein and I worked out a, um, finally, after about a year and a half, a bill on information sharing, which is of critical importance. That's the number one issue out there right now. And, and that bill that Diane and I worked on uh, was taken over by Richard Burr, who succeeded me and, and uh, Senator Feinstein, and they cleaned it up, got uh, enough folks on board to get it passed, frankly, in a big way, so that today there's the ability of any private sector entity in the United States and any government entity to share information, to talk about cybersecurity. What are the threats out there? What are you seeing from a government standpoint? What are you seeing from a private sector standpoint? In addition to that, uh, there's the ability of any private sector entity to communicate from an information sharing standpoint with another private entity. It doesn't have to be a competitor necessarily, but um, you, um, you can discuss cyber threats and not only what you're seeing, but what countermeasures have you put in place, have they worked? Those kinds of conversations are taking place today. Um, what Senator Feinstein and I encountered was that while we wanted to get this done, there were two big hurdles we had to get over. Number one, there's an antitrust law out there called the Sherman Act that keeps competitors from dialoguing on just about anything. So we had to get over that hurdle and provide an antitrust exemption. And then huh. secondly, um, there is a niche in the plaintiff community that uh, allows for suits to be filed when um, um, entities talk with each other and um, share information, although this law says that uh, you can't share any information relative to any individual. It's got to be scrubbed, but when you do that, then you're going to be protected from a liability standpoint. Once we got over those two hurdles, we were able to get a bill passed that is meaningful. There are regulations that have already come out, and actually DHS, which is the lead agency, did a pretty good job with the initial regulations. They're going to be fine-tuned, and the final regs will come out here in the next few weeks. And I think we've taken a giant step from a policy standpoint, but we've still got to get this law implemented, and then I think there are going to be some next steps on encryption as well as on uh, data breach that you'll see. Uh, at least debated in Washington. Yeah, it sounds like you're outlining a multi-year undertaking. Oh, it's, um, it is. I mean, it's it, because it's even in our discussion and our debate on the law, what we had to be re constantly reminded of was that as soon as we put something in place, it's going to be outdated. We've got to put something in place that technology will not um, uh, proceed past us, and that's not easy to do legislatively. Sure, sure. And any time, I mean, this is a massive issue. This is probably going to be one of the biggest news stories for the next 10 to 15 years. And uh, uh, in the process of crafting regulatory and legislative response, elephants are dancing, mice get stomped on. When you look to the Beltway, <laughs> what jumps out at you in terms of stuff they're working on actively now? We'll get to what they should be doing later. I, I think Congress 
Cong it's very difficult, as the senator pointed out, to get things done in Congress. There are a lot of different interests. It moves at its own speed. I think the, the size of bill at the end of last year was a very positive step. Uh, this, the Obama administration actually has been very proactive in, uh, in trying to move the debate along. They've now developed the National Action Plan, and there are, they're trying to move on a number of different, uh, different paths, both in terms of trying to, you know, trying to uh, harmonize standards, trying to uh, promote best standards, working closely with technology companies to promote uh, you know, secure, secure ways to, uh, to, to use their platforms. Um, so there, there's, I think there's a lot that they want to do. The funding has increased dramatically. Uh, you know, the, one of the problems is we're, we're essentially playing a defensive role, and these hackers are, you know, some of them are opportunistic, but a lot of them are, very, are dedicated. Some of them are probably state-sponsored, and they have tremendous resources, and they're very patient, and we're going to need to uh, uh, really sort of up our game. And I think this is a start, but we really have a long way to go. Uh, I'm just not particularly interested at the moment in what Congress is going to do or not, because we have to spend the money and be so far ahead of the game in order to provide the comfort for the clients that w Congress will eventually catch up to something that presumably will be sensible given how the landscape changes or not. But what clients, what Rory was talking about before about the RFPs, I mean, if clients don't believe that you're investing the same kind of time and effort and money in technology to protect them, they have every reason in the world to go someplace else. So for me, it's very much a present business problem and commercial problem that I've got to resolve in the context of the overall financial environment affecting law firms. Mm. It's just, it's another on a long list of these things that goes on, and particularly for a firm like us, given the scope and reach and some of the places that we are, and global clients, it becomes even more important for us to invest the money well ahead of whatever the regulatory components are. That's an interesting answer. I'm particularly looking forward to seeing how you're going to handle the next question, but before we do that, Well, I'm going to lead you to the you next question, Lee, because I think that Roger put his finger on it. I, look, I think the government has done a lot. There's tons of laws on the books. Every agency has data requirements and breach requirements and notification requirements. You don't have a comprehensive plan, and that's true. And, and what that really impacts on is the international business, the ability to do international law and practice international law. And where government does have to step up is to make sure that we meet the same standards as you, that Europe has in place, that the EU has in place. Um, so for example, I mean, our clients are telling me things like, uh, you know, we need to have separate servers for our European business and separate servers for our American entities because Europe doesn't trust us. So that's where I think government has to step in because I agree with Roger. I think we have to be way ahead of our clients in spending the money to safeguard the information. Companies that, that work with law firms need to understand that their environments could be fortress-like, but if their bridge is down to vendors that have authorized uh, access to their systems or who hold their data, those law firms, like all vendors, are potentially vulnerable. And so the companies that uh, work with law firms need to impose uh, restrictions and, and required safeguards on law firms to ensure that their data is, uh, is, is maintained in, the, in, in, in a secure fashion, maybe not the most secure fashion possible because that's reasonably impossible these days, but in, a, in a, uh, at least a reasonably secure fashion. So we're seeing uh, financial institutions, for example, impose significant contractual restrictions on, on law firms 